Cecilia Ibru, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Nigeria is getting billions of dollars a year from the oil industry. Foreign companies, foreign investors looking to move into this country. And yet, the World Bank says that 70% of the people here are living on $400 a year or less. How come there is that disconnect? Well, the, the disconnect is probably due to demographic reasons, being that we have grown so much more than the petrol, petrol dollar can sustain. I mean, we compare ourselves with other countries where, like Saudi Arabia and so on, where they have used petrol dollar to great advantage, but then they don't have the type of uh, population we have. We have over 140 million people, and, and most of us are still uneducated, illiterate. So our ability to access funds and to earn and create value it's really usually predicated on knowledge base. But it's not just about demographic growth, is it? It is about political failure as well. It is about endemic corruption. Let me just quote to you Wale Suyinka, Nobel Prize winning yes. writer. The wealthier we have grown, he says, the worse has become the degradation of our society. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that because it depends on the relativity you have in mind. And if you look at Nigeria, many more people are now becoming, uh, more, becoming employed. And um, we, I do agree that about 60-70% are yet to come to the level where you can say they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they can live uh, reasonably, um, um, reasonably with a reasonable style of life. Well, let's make no bones about it. 70% of people in this country are poor, and about 30% are extremely poor. 30% probably extremely poor, but then when you look at it, we are coming from a position where we, we feel that now we are in a better position to address these issues. Who is addressing these issues? And who the has the credibility to deliver on these issues? The government, with the private sector, we are all joining hands to address the issues that we feel have been neglected for so long. But I ask you about credibility because the government and the president, President Yaradua, who is newly installed in office, they came into office on the back of what was widely regarded by the international community as a rigged election. Where is the credibility in that? Well, talking about rigging, I think it's a phenomenon that's not peculiar to Nigeria. We had it also in the U.S. recently, and if our well, elections... Forgive me, but, but in the U United States, they have had electoral problems. They haven't had between two and 300 people murdered in the process of going to the polls, as you had here. Well, let's put it this way, that, you know, that could have been the case. But however, it is part of the price we are paying for midwifing our nation into a democracy. I'm just wondering what you, as the boss of pretty much the fastest growing bank in Nigeria. What do you say to people who call you executives from foreign companies looking to invest in Nigeria, maybe hook up with your bank? Do you say to them, by all means come here, you can make great business here, but leave your moral scruples at the door? Is that what you say? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say there's a lot of business to be done here. However, any moral issues are being addressed on a regular basis. Really? Really. When I Transparency International's latest poll says that they polled a whole range of Nigerians. 40% of them, 40% said that they had had to pay a bribe within the last 12 months. 40%? Thank God it's not 60%. And if it's no, but this is just within the last it, year. Yes, if it's 40%, 40 before that, Nigeria was adjudged to be 100% corrupt. But now, if we say 60%, it's now not by, you know, taking the, the other side, the, the other view, then it means we are making progress in this regard. Well, I've heard of the glass being half full rather than half empty, but exactly. you seem to be taking it to an extraordinary degree. I mean, another quote for you, The Economist reports that the last federal budget presented to, to the National Assembly showed that the National Petroleum Corporation had somehow failed to remit over five billion US dollars to the Treasury had somehow been lost in the system. And that is money that actually belongs to the Nigerian people. 
Yes, indeed. I believe they are investigating it, and uh, the report is here to come out. So, I'm trying to get my head around this. You believe that the sor sorts of things I'm citing to you are not going to put people off who might want to invest in this country. This sort of massive corruption that we see in government, amongst politicians, and amongst top levels of business. Well, let me put it this way, that the environment at the moment is getting better for business. And the issues of corruption are being addressed on a daily basis. We have EFCC there, and we have NDLEA. We That's have the Economic and Financial Crimes yes, Unit. Yes, yes. And they are all addressing the issue. And I believe that there's a clean-up exercise going on right now. And it should be given a chance so that you know, we will be able to say in another two, three years what the position really is. Let, let me ask you this, Mrs. Ibru. In, in your business operations, and you are a very successful banker, do you have to pay bribes, sweeteners, payoffs to get things done? Not necessarily. But well, no, we, not we necessarily, but no. I'm asking you, do you? No. At all? At all. So while we know it goes on throughout the economy and throughout politics in this country, you're saying somehow you've risen to the very top without having to pay a single... We, we have not had to pay bribes in order to get business. This aspect of corruption that they talk about in Nigeria, yes, it is there, but when they know that you will not participate, you are not forced to. I just wonder where you draw the line, because I notice from your own bank's literature, you're very keen on establishing public-private partnerships with yes. different levels of government. You're working, I think, with five state governments, including yes. uh, Rivers State. Yes. Now, you know better than I do that Rivers State is currently under investigation. The, government, the governor, who recently re retired, is facing serious allegations of widespread bribery and corruption. And I just looked into it. Uh, governor Peter O'Dealy he dealt with an annual budget of $1.3 billion. Now, of course, very little of that reached his own people, according to the figures which suggest that that state is living in dire poverty. But he spent $11.5 million on new cars. He bought two new helicopters for the governor's office to go with the private plane he already had. He spent $10 million on gifts and hospitality. Now, is this the kind of man that you should be setting up joint ventures with? He's no longer in government. Well, I know that. He retired in May. But, yes, but my but point is, you've been wanting to get into public-private partnerships yes. with him for a long time. Yes. Well, not with him in particular. Well, with the state, which he no, was running. The, private, the PPP program have just started, and we are all just keying in right now. So this government is really going to kick it off. And we believe that this kind of, the, what you just described there, of course, you know, is something that we sh one should be ashamed of. But having said that, is the structure that was wrong, and that structure has to be addressed. Because if you give money to governors and you, and you do don't ask for accountability, you are asking for trouble, and that is what happened. But that, that continues to happen. As I understand it, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is still examining serious allegations concerning 30 of Nigeria's 36 governors, and yet I come back to the point, your bank wants to invest with these people, running their states in these public-private partnerships. these are governors that are no longer governing. Well, some of them are. No, Mr. they are Odili not. Mr. Odili isn't, but others no, are. Other, no, how many of them are, are still there? Most of them well, are Well, out of the changed. 30, I don't know, but certainly not all of them are retired this year. Well, most of them are retired this year, last year rather, and um, May this year, most of them were retired. And the new ones that are there, they have a different approach to, to, to how money should be expended. Many of them are looking for how they will improve their states and how they will, you know, allevi alleviate poverty. We have the seven-point agenda by our president, which everybody is working on, on the state level, on the federal level. And I believe that this seven-point agenda with the rule of law and with the reforms that will continue will make a world of difference as we go along our path of democracy in governance. There's no question that people are making money in Nigeria. You can see it in the city of Lagos. But what you can also see driving around the city are people living in shanty towns, people with no access to running water, clean 